Welcome to Dove Christian Center Church and our video presentation today, also known as Dove Church. Uh, we are glad you tuned in and glad you continue to watch us. Uh, we thank God for our, our viewership. We thank God for your prayers and we thank God for your support. We bless you today as we embark upon another uh, word uh, lesson. Uh, and today, as usual, uh, what I normally do in our church is I do a confession before we, 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 we preach and minister and teach. And, and, and you can join along with me and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you for this time of sharing and impartation. We thank you that the Holy Spirit will take us to where we need to be and minister to our hearts and our minds and our souls, our total being today. We thank you now for what is freely given to us of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for what we are about to receive in the way of bread. We thank you, God, and we ask it all and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. The 23rd Psalm is a beloved and familiar scripture, but there can be a problem with familiar and comfortable passages in the Bible. As we have heard them many times, we have read them many times, we have heard them preach over and over again, we hear this passage at funerals very often. And so when we hear something a lot, we have a tendency to overhear it or not hear it or think that we met the breath of it and, 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 and the depth of it. And, and, and so we miss the digging into the meaning of it. And the 23rd Psalm is rich in meaning. And in particular today, I'm going to just pull out uh, uh, four words, uh, 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 but then I'm going to read Psalm 23, 1, 2, and 3. And then we're going to focus in on those four words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And so if I can, I'm going to lift those four words out of that third verse. He restores my soul. And we're going to work with that today, and we're going to unpack that today and talk about it and go into a little detail and depth on how the Lord restores our soul. He restores my soul. Four simple words. What do they mean? What do they say to us? What should they say to us? In this passage, David has shifted his gaze from the lust green pastures and the still waters and, and, and the sheep, and has moved his eyesight onto the person. He shifted the focus to the person. The first word of our four-word phrase is he. David says that he, meaning that he is not talking about himself, but rather the great good shepherd, which is God the Father. It is this good shepherd that ministers to us. Ezekiel the prophet speaks to the good shepherd and says this in Ezekiel 34 and 16, New King James Version. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. The second word after he is the word restore. Now, we're going to spend a, a, a little bit of time here talking about restoration. A look at the entire 23rd Psalm provides three principles for restoration. They are rest, reflection, and replenishment. Rest, 
reflection and replenishment. The first one, rest, the first principle. David was at rest when he wrote this psalm or song. This was not a psalm to prepare for battle. It is a pulling back from the great shepherd, uh, uh, by the great shepherd, moving the sheep to lie down in green pastures by calm waters. He makes me to lie down. Philip Keller, in his great book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, writes that the sheep do not lie down easily and will not unless four conditions are met. Because they are, t are timid, they will not lie down if they are afraid. Because they are social, they will not lie down if there is friction among the sheep. If flies or parasites trouble them, they will not lie down. Finally, if sheep are anxious about food or hungry, they will not lie down. Rest then comes because the shepherd has dealt with fear, friction, flies, famine, and pestilence. The great shepherd is with us, and he is dealing with all the issues of even our day, COVID-19. Exodus 33 and 14 tells us, The Lord said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. It's good to know that the Lord's presence, the good shepherd, is with us and that he is going to go with us wherever we go. We go. We are not alone. B, reflection is the second principle. Restoration involves reflection. David's soul was restored as he looked at life from God's perspective. When you join yourself to the presence of God, he will bring feelings of protection, safety, security, and soundness. It is good to reflect on his past acts towards you. You need to look back and remember where God has brought you from. You need to also remember that God's testimony is sure. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. And, and, and he is so sure in his testimony that he's consistent with us. If there's an inconsistency, it is with us, but it's never with God. Psalm 63, 5 through 7 tells us, My soul shall be satisfied as my marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. We are under his wing of protection and because of that we rejoice because he's with us. The third and final principle is replenishment. Restoration includes replenishment. To obtain again what was taken away. That's what replenishment means. To regain again what was taken away. A good picture of replenish comes to us from Psalm 30 and 11. And it says there, You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. So the Lord replenishes my joy. You replenish my excitement. You replenish my happiness. You put back what was lost. You put back what was taken away. You restore what the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten up. You replenish. Thank God for replenishment. You will not have a fresh perspective of God's presence in your lives if you consistently rush from one life issue to the next. Remember in his presence his fullness of joy and at his right hand our pleasures forevermore. Now let's move to our third word. And it is, he restores my. 
My is the third word. My in Hebrew means of me. Because the great shepherd is with me, I can say my or he is of me. He's not only with me, but he's of me. He's through me. He's around me. When David said, the Lord is my shepherd, it wasn't that he was just a shepherd for all. While true, he was also his personal shepherd, my personal healer, my personal protector, my personal deliverer, my personal search and rescue person. Because when I'm lost or when I stray, he comes after me. He is also my personal GPS. He knows where green pastures is, and he knows where still waters are. He knows where all of those things are, and he leads me there. But he also, because he's a good GPS person, he knows how to lead me through the valley of the shadow of death, and I can come out all right. The fourth word is soul. He restores my soul. My soul. He restores my soul. God, that hits me in a great way. He restores my soul. In this day and time where so much is happening, I want you to know today that God is a restorer and that he can put things back together again. Yes, there will be some losses, but I'm telling you the restoration is going to be greater than loss. He restores. And I'm expecting him to restore. I'm not expecting to go backward. I'm expecting to be replenished because I have a personal Savior who knows where I am and he knows what I need. In Hebrew, the word for, for soul is nephash. And, 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 but it, is not, it not only means soul, its expanded meaning is my being, my spirit my soul, my body, a, a breathing, living creature, my whole life, my nephesh. He restores my nephesh. The good shepherd restores my nephesh, my whole life, so that I am once again able to stand, walk, and feed. I am able to hold my own as part of the flock. Where the old left me weak, inept, and disabled, we now have strength. Our nephesh is not limited, but inclusive of other areas of our lives. Our nephesh is at the seat of our appetites, what we crave, what we hunger. In restoring our soul, he makes us hunger and thirst first, after righteousness. He is a thirst quencher. When I was in the young adult choir years ago, we sang a song with these words. Lord, my soul is thirsting and I want a refreshing. Lord, my soul is thirsting and I need a, re a, 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 a fresh touch. Lord, my soul is thirsting and I want a refreshing. Grant me a blessing today. And then we said it again. Grant me a blessing today. You can say that. Lord, I need a refreshing. Grant me a blessing today. Our nephesh is also the seat of our emotions. In restoring our soul, he turns our mourning, our sorrow again into dancing. He removes our, 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 our grief clothes, our sackcloths of lamentation and distress, and gives us clothing of gladness. And I'm glad to be wearing a new robe of joy today because the Lord is my strength. He's also my joy. And I rejoice in the fact that he is with me. He knows where I am. He's handling everything around me. He is my joy today. He handles my despair. He handles my frustration. He handles my isolation. He handles my desperation and my loneliness. Our nephesh also 
refers to our mental acts, our thinking and knowing. The good shepherd restores our thinking. And sometimes we may not want to admit it, but our, 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 our thinking stinks. We think the wrong thing. We think doubt instead of faith. And we confess everything that we see on TV, but we don't believe God for what we read in his word. So I thank God that as he is restoring my whole life, he restores my thinking to the right place. They are my whole being. Psalm 119 and 130 from the, the Passion Translation says this. Break open your word within me until revelation light shines out. Those with open hearts are given insight into your plans. You want my nephesh, God, my whole life to have knowledge of what you are doing in the earth. God, feed me from on high with fresh knowledge of who you are. Holy Spirit, guide me to the knowledge of what God would have me to know in this time. That you love me, that you are my keeper, that you are with me. That you restore my soul. Well, as I come to a close in this brief message, the summation statement is, the great shepherd, God, brings me to wholeness through rest, relaxation, and replenishment. While developing a personal care plan for me, this care plan will benefit my nephesh. Or my whole life. I thank you that you care for me. That you have a care plan made just for me. And I'm glad to announce to you again. And this is because I have a personal savior. He restores my soul. Say that. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Get ready. The Lord is going to restore you. He's going to put some stuff back. He's going to make it all right. And I'm not dream chasing. I'm not talking about an untruth because God's testimony is right. The Bible says, let every man be a liar and God be the truth. He restores your soul today. And he's going to restore it this day. As you're looking at this, whatever time you tune in, it's going to bless you. And you walk around with them four words. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Now, I want to give somebody an opportunity to give their life to the Lord. If you heard our message today and you have a witness in your heart, God is touching you right now. Repeat these words after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you repenting of my sin. Today, I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day Jesus died on a cross. And on that third day morning, he was raised from the dead to the glory of God. On that confession and on that belief, I am saved. We encourage you to, to follow through on the commitment. Find a good church to get into. Look up Dove Church. Find us. We're at 4660 Military Street at the corner of Horatio in Detroit, Michigan. Come and see us. We'll be glad to have you. Blessings to you today. Blessings to you, dear friends. Thank you for joining us in our video presentation and word message. We'd also like to encourage you to assist us in giving by going to our webpage and finding dubchurch.org, going to the giving link that will take you to our PayPal page. And we look forward to your support and your love. Thank you for tuning in. God bless.